SAP QM or LIMS, which is right for your lab. We have a special treat for you today. We have two presenters here from CECL. We have Howard Rosenberg, our principal industry consultant, and Jeff Turnbull, a delivery manager. Uh, we're going to dive right in, so I'll pass the ball over to these guys and go ahead and get started. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, if we can go to the next slide, there you go. I just wanted to give you a quick bio of myself so you'll get an idea of who one of uh, your speakers are. My name is Howard Rosenberg. I have been involved with the informatics uh, or laboratory informatics industry for greater than 20 years. I have expertise in a number of different uh, informatics systems, including lab information systems, electronic lab notebooks, scientific document management systems, chromatography data systems, and you can go on and on. Uh, I've been operating and uh, been successful in a number of different environments, uh, including the different industries you see on the screen here today. I also have extensive knowledge of laboratory information processes and workflows, as well as IT. Um, and I have, back in the day, a doctorate in chemistry. So I'll give you an idea of my background. Jeff? Thanks, Howard. So my name is Jeff Turnbull. I'm going to be a co-presenter today. I've got uh, more than two decades experience in informatics, uh, focusing in both the lab and specifically QC labs in a variety of industries, but also with ERP manufacturing execution systems and electronic batch records. During my more than two decades in the industry, I've witnessed the evolution and the occasional revolution of lab informatics from rudimentary Excel spreadsheets to the current web-based integrated systems. So what are we going to be discussing today? Well, the title of the webinar is SAP QM or LIMS what is right for your lab, and really it's what is right for your QC lab. We're addressing a very complex and controversial topic in today's webinar, and we're trying to do it in a very short time period. We will therefore be presenting summary of the knowledge that we have gained from CSOL's 15 years plus experience in the industry. The information we are going to present is derived from real-world examples, and Howard and I will do our very best to keep personal preferences out of the conversation. So first, uh, some of the things that we're not going to be doing today, we're not going to be performing a side-by-side -side comparison of functionality between SAP and LIMS. We're not going to be providing a detailed discussion of the information flow between SAP and other lab informatics systems. We're also not going to be presenting a formula from which you can make your own decision. So what are we going to be doing? Well, we're going to be presenting some factual information based on real-world implementations that will help guide you in making your own decision. So we're going to start the webinar off by going through some statements that you've likely heard from colleagues, from associates in other companies, or even while attending conferences and trade shows. We're going to take some of the most important statements that you've probably heard and attempt to separate the fact from the fiction. We're then going to follow this up by identifying some of the common challenges being faced by both SAP and LIMS vendors, and we're going to describe their different approaches in solving those challenges. We're then going to move into a discussion on the many different alternate landscapes that have been implemented in the industry. We're going to describe them in some detail, identifying the characteristics that contributed to their success. We're then going to describe the most salient factors that need to be addressed in order to make a decision, and finally summarize the essence of this presentation. And then at the end of all of that, time permitting, we'll go into a Q&A session where we, Howard and I, will attempt to respond to questions that you have. So let's get started. What have you heard? So 
as you can see uh, from the list that uh, Jeff has just put up here, there's a number of different things that you've probably heard. And just to give you some understanding of uh, how we're presenting this, you'll notice that certain of these items have little red stars next to them. These are the ones that we actually uh, feel are, are very pertinent, and we're going to discuss them in more detail later on in the presentation. So as a result, I'll go through these very briefly, and the ones that are not starred, I'll try and give a little bit more um, detail to, since we're not going to go through that much later on. So starting off on the SAP QM side, uh, first of all, in case uh, people are not really aware, SAP QM stands for the Quality Management Module QM, right? And LIMS is for Laboratory Information Management Systems. One of the things you probably have heard often is that SAP QM can now do everything a LIMS can do. And uh, we're going to go through that a little bit in a few minutes, so I'm not going to spend much time on that. SAP QM software comes at no additional cost. Um, so we're going to go through that as well. There are significant cost savings under a LIMS, uh, overusing a LIMS, I'm sorry, when you're putting in SAP QM only. And if you're going to go and do one global system, that means you absolutely have to use SAP, and we'll talk about that also. One of the points that uh, we're not going to go through very much, on, but I'll do it right here, is that it's more difficult to validate an SAP QM system. And if you've attempted before to validate any portion of the SAP system, you'll know that that is true. It is very difficult to validate an SAP QM system, but it's not impossible. What's important, actually, to understand is which parts of the SAP system you are touching and what affects what in order to understand what parts of the SAP system need to be validated and how you go about maintaining that valid, or, or should I should say doing the validation and maintaining a validated state. It, uh, one thing you've probably heard also or experiencing is that it has been mandated that you use SAP QM. And, and just out of curiosity, I'd like to take a quick survey of the audience today to get an idea of how many in the audience has actually been mandated to use SAP QM and not a LIMS. So if you'll see, there's a little raise your hand button on your, uh, I guess, on the right uh, side of your screen. So those of you who have been actually told that you must use SAP QM, please raise your hand now. I'll give you a couple seconds here to do so. 